All right, finally got the, the Rad's flat tires fixed. The front on mine was flat and the two on Katrina's were both flat. So I got those fixed last night and these guys right here were the, the, the guilty parties. See all these little thorns right here? If you can see them in my hand. But these little thorns, call those goat head thorns. And those things, look at the tubes right there. Yeah, all the tubes. Those things are nasty, they're just like nails. But I am getting ready to go on my first ride back out on the rad in over a month, I think. It's because I had vacation, vacation time and had to, had to wait for the tubes to come in. But I am ready to go, so let's go. It feels great to be back on the rad. I tell you what, sometimes you don't know what you're missing until you haven't gotten to ride it for a while. And I tell you, there, there's just something about the rad bikes. <clears throat> now, I haven't ridden the other ones, but the Rad Rover 6 Plus, I, I tell you, the, the the comfort and feel on it is it's second to none. You know, I've been riding the Zebra for a while, more than usual because of the flat tires. You know, the Zebra, it's it's definitely more for off road, but here with the, on the Rad. The comfort, the feel, how everything works, it's just, you know, I have to use that word again, it's just refined. There's just something about a very well-made bike, and I know there'll be people out there going, oh, it's underpowered, it's da blah, 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 blah. But this is a cruiser. Capable of some off-road, but best used as a, as a cruiser, like what I'm doing right now. And it's hard, it would be hard to go wrong choosing this bike if this is what you want to do. It just plain, plain, I think, does everything very well. <clears throat> and the fit and finish on it. It really makes this bike a standout. But I'm not on this ride to try and sell you on, on the Rad Rover again. I'm on it to, to ride, and I do have a story. I guess you could say it's story time. And this story comes about from a, <clears throat> a, a recent experience I had. about an experience I had back when I was about 19 years old in the army. So yes, it's a, I guess you could say it's a army story or a soldier story. Nothing gory, nothing about combat, just an experience I had when I was in Europe. And this story came about because I had a recent experience on vacation that just brought a, I guess you could say, a flashback of the memory. And not a, not, not, nothing bad, no bad flashbacks or anything. But at the time it happened, I was a, a very nervous soldier. <laughs> But uh, 
let me go ahead and tell you. Let me go ahead and tell the story. And then you can see where there was a time for me to be a bit scared, nervous, very heightened senses, and then a time to laugh about it. So, like I said, I was about 19 years old. And I had been in the army for about two years at that point. Did my first two years in Georgia. at the 1st first, first Cavalry Division at Fort Stewart. And then I got my orders. Order said, you're going to Europe, young man. <laughs> Germany to be precise. And I was already pretty nervous about that. Because that would have been, actually been my first time out of the country. So I was already nervous about that. <clears throat> but anyways, I got to Germany. I got to assign to a, a cavalry unit because I was a cavalry scout. get through the, the, the people here and I'll continue my story. And I got some geese too. Thank you. So yes, I was a cavalry scout, a 19 Delta. Later on, changed that MOS to 19 Kilo, M1 tanker. Oh, that's a story for another time though. So when I got to Germany, I was assigned to a border unit. Yes, a border unit. This was the time before the, the wall came down, before the Iron Curtain disappeared. So I was on a border unit that patrolled the border between West Germany and Czechoslovakia. And the first time I got sent to the border, we would do like a month and a half to two months at the border at a time, at a little outpost. And then get sent back to our regular unit, which was not much bigger than the post at the border, and just keep rotating that throughout my whole, my whole deployment there. But anyways, so my, first real experience of guarding or patrolling the border, I got assigned to a, a GSR unit for a night. GSR stands for Ground Surveillance Radar. 
and it was basically a portable radar that they would put on a Jeep, take out to the border at night, and just watch the, the legal border crossing for any armored vehicles that might be coming down the pike for a surprise attack. <clears throat> So there was four of us. You had two of the, the radar technicians that monitored the radar. two guards. You like how I time that between the people? Yeah, I still get a little nervous talking around people. But anyways, so the other two of us, we were guards. You know, we would hike back maybe about 100, 200 yards away behind the, the GSR guys to guard their backs. But we did it in shifts. And I had a sergeant there with me, so it was me and a sergeant. At, then, at that point, I was still a PFC, so I was the low-ranking dude. So he got the bright idea of, let's, do a, let's just do two shifts, six hours each. And of course he says, I'll take, he'll take the first shift, the sergeant said. So this is at nighttime. You know, we go there, we go there just after dark to try and be sneaky and secret and so the other side won't see us up there even though I'm sure they knew we were there. So that meant my shift started about one in the morning. <laughs> now of course, early in the evening, you're not tired. So you just sit there with the, I just, well, I just sat there with the, the radar guys watching the screen because I'm not tired enough to fall asleep. But then eventually, my shift started. And the cook had packed us some like sack lunches, sandwich, apple, um, something to drink. But I tell you what, that cook, I think he just didn't like people because he'd always make dry sandwiches. And he would never pack any mayonnaise or mustard or anything. So he'd, ate, he'd eat these dry cheese and bologna sandwiches. So I grabbed my dry bologna sandwich, took it out to where I was going to set up my guard post. And since it was dark now, I had to wear night vision. Night vision for the next six hours. I tell you what, that, that green that is in that night vision, at least back then, it messes with your eyes after so much time. But it must have been about, oh, three or four in the morning. And now I'm really tired. I am, you know, trying to keep, trying to keep awake. But I'm doing, you know, being a good soldier, watching, waiting. Then all of a sudden, just uh, just at the, the horizon, at the horizon that you can see in these night vision goggles, I see a couple figures that look like they're coming towards me off in the distance. I'm still talking maybe, oh, 200 yards away. And to me, they look like they're trying to move tactically, 
hunch down, moving from position to position, closing in on me. So, now I'm wide awake. Kind of. <laughs> and I'm watching, and all of a sudden they're gone. And that, that, oh crap feeling is coming over my head. And we didn't have a radio, so I couldn't radio back to my sergeant saying, hey, I see something, something's coming our way. So I contemplated Should I run back real quick and, and warn them? That if I do that, they might get past. So I stood there and I was gonna hold my ground. And then I started hearing things rustling in the bushes over to my left. And at that moment, I made the choice to load my weapon. So we had, they gave us two 30 round magazines. So I had 60 rounds. But these magazines, they put duct tape over the top. They put duct tape over the top for number one to not lose any ammunition because these magazines were passed from guard to guard. And God help you if you lose a bullet. But anyways, and the second reason was is to make you think twice about before loading your weapon. Well, I had thought two, three, four times already. I pulled that duct tape off, loaded my weapon. I actually locked and loaded. Didn't, didn't take it off the safe. It was still in safe, but I was locked and loaded because I, I was sure someone's trying to come up and attack me. <clears throat> and I got these night vision goggles on and I'm looking, I'm looking in every direction. I'm down in, the, in a tactical position, down on my knees. can't see anything so I stand up to try and see if I get a better view and the wind was picking up not hard just blowing around but when I stood up a branch blew and swept the back of my shoulder and you're probably thinking exactly what I was thinking someone's behind me and they're trying to grab me well I turned around safety was off I switched to fire I turned around and I was ready just to blast just to find out it was a tree just a tree branch I was gonna blow away a tree <laughs> well at that time, I realized I was just so tired. My imagination took over. You know, being on guard duty, you're on alert, you're looking for the bad guys. My imagination made some bad guys. <clears throat> Fortunately, I was the only one to see that. So I quickly pulled the magazine out, took the bullet out, put it back in, put the, the duct tape back over it, and 
Never told that story to anybody in the army. <laughs> but now you've all heard it. <laughs> and that's my, just one of my stories of some experiences I had in the army when I was in. I've got more if you want to hear more. I have some that are that can be just as funny and I have some that are just like this. Start out serious and or actually start out kind of funny and end up even much more serious. So you let me know if you want to hear some more of those. I enjoy telling them. I, I know I'll, I know my family loves hearing them. But uh yeah, let me know. Let me know in the comments if you want to hear more. I tell you what, oh, I missed my rad. And I am just loving this. This is the, like, the, the, you know how they say, BMW used to say, I don't know if they still say it in their commercials, the ultimate driving machine. Well, this is like the, the ultimate fat tire cruiser. I really think so. But anyways, I think we will call this video a wrap in this ride. I actually got to get back home and start getting on painting the house. I got to finish that up. I'm about halfway through and this is a perfect day. It's not gonna be too hot, not gonna be too cold. Perfect day to be outside painting the house. So, you have a great weekend, and a great week coming up, and I will see you on the next video. Bye.